We're now going to take a look at some methods that dictionary objects provide. Remember that methods are things that objects can do. And so, like other objects in Python, dictionaries also provide some methods to allow certain types of processing. The dictionary that we're going to start with is a dictionary with associations between months and the average temperature and we've got four entries in our dictionary one for January, one for February, one for March, and one for April and the first method that we're going to look at is a method called get. Get is going to be another way, an alternative way, to retrieve a data value that is associated with a particular key. So for example, if I ask the temps dictionary to perform its get method, I have to provide a key. So if I say I would like the temps dictionary to perform its get method and give it the key March, then it will return the associated data value 34. And of course we know that this is identical to using the indexing operation where we're indexing by key and retrieving the data value associated with March in that way. So the get method and the indexing operator both perform the same task. However, when we try to use the indexing operator to look for the value associated with a key that is not present in the dictionary, we run into trouble. The indexing operator provides a runtime error if we use a key that it's not present. The get method, on the other hand, behaves differently. If we ask the dictionary to perform its get method looking for the key June, it simply returns none. It returns the value none. There is no value returned because there is no association for that particular key. Now, more than likely, there is going to need to be some kind of a check done before we attempt to get a value from a dictionary or index into a dictionary by a key so that we don't have a problem either returning an error or returning the value none but at least when we use the get method we don't end up with a runtime error if we attempt to get something that's not present. There is a second version of the get method however that does respond to the fact that the key may not be present. If we were to ask our dictionary to perform its get method, we can provide two parameters. One is the key, and the second is what's referred to as the alternative return. The idea is that we can provide a value that will be returned if the key is not present. And so in this case, we're asking the dictionary to get the value associated with the key June but in the event that June is not in the dictionary, the string error will be returned instead. And so when we perform that, of course, we get the string error as the result. If we had done the same thing but used a key that is present, then because the key is in there, the associated data value gets returned. So the get method and the indexing operator are both going to be used to access information. Of course, only the indexing operator can be used to add or modify entries that already exist. The get method is only useful to retrieve a value from the dictionary. There are three other methods that can be quite handy when we work with dictionaries, and they are methods that allow us to return collections that are associated with all of the keys or all of the dictionaries or all of the or all of the uh, values or all of the items within the dictionary. So for example, I can ask the temps dictionary to show me all of the keys that are contained in the dictionary. And when I do that, notice that it returns to me what looks like a list of the key values. 
but it's very important to realize that this is not a list. Even though it has what looks like a list in terms of the square brackets, notice that outside it says that this is actually what's called a dict keys object. In other words, the return result of the keys method is a collection containing the keys, but it is not a list. It is a different kind of object, which means the typical kinds of list mechanisms may or may not work with this dict keys object. Now, if we wanted to have this collection of keys behave like a list, then what we could do is actually turn it into a list by using the list function. And so I could do something like this. I could say the key list is going to be the list function working on the result of calling the keys method on the temps dictionary. So let's deconstruct this. This is an assignment statement. It says I would like the key list to be a reference to the result of applying the list function to, what ha to the return of the keys method on the temps dictionary. The temps dictionary, the keys method, returns a dict keys object which contains all of the months. The list function turns it into a list and now key list will be a reference to that list and now you can see that that list is in fact a typical list as we would expect. That list now can of course perform any list method or operation that we are used to. So for example if I wanted to sort that list I could simply use the sort method and now I'll have that group of keys alphabetically sorted. A similar method is called values and you can imagine that what it does is returns a collection of all the values that are present in the dictionary but again it's not a list it is a dict values object but you could turn it into a list if you wanted to and finally there is a method called items which returns a collection of all of the items in the dictionary but again it is not a list it is a dict items object but it can be turned into a list if you wish